Welcome into K-State Online. Mason Voth, Derek Young here with you as we get ready to talk Cats and Trojans, a start to the basketball season. One of the bigger tip-offs that K-State has had in recent memory, given the fact that uh, the opponent is not some just nobody school coming to Bramlage Coliseum. It is USC, number 21 team in the country as the Wildcats get ready to take on all the fanfare that goes with this tip-off event out in Las Vegas, that is where D.Y. sits right now. He has uh, been there, I guess, since yesterday. He didn't get to have some of the, the fun all weekend. He goes from Austin to Vegas in preparation for the late-night tip between K-State and USC. So, uh, D.Y., just right off the bat, what is the vibe like in Las Vegas? Have you seen many K-Staters yet? Uh, it, no, not, not a ton yet, I wouldn't say. Um, there was a you know, my flight might have been from Austin to Vegas. My flight was probably a third K State fans. Okay. Well, I saw I saw a lot of uh, a lot of people tweeting about you know wherever they were flying from to Vegas. There were plenty of K State fans, which I guess stands to reason. You know, if you're you're a K State or going to Vegas, you're probably going to see others there. But uh, notable at the very least to see everything going on. Look, this is a this is a tricky start to the season for K State because. Very rarely do teams challenge themselves like this off the bat. I mean, everybody probably thinks of the Champions Classic and all those schools, but they they wait like a week into the season to play that game. They get a game or two knocked out of the way against, you know, some SWAC school or, you know, Sun Belt or whatever. K-State not getting that opportunity. And really the schedule in general in non-conference play, there's not a ton of room for error and just, you know, giving yourself time to ease into things. Uh, so what what do you expect from K State in this type of game tonight? Uh, just you know, no no room to kind of take off. It's it's here. You got to go with USC. Yeah, you're you're getting a really good uh, opponent right out of the gate, but you're also doing it while you're probably still in transition a little bit when it comes to your offensive system and kind of morphing that to what your current roster is. Uh, you're you're still breaking in some new players that are probably going to play some meaningful minutes for you this year, like Data Ames, maybe RJ Jones, maybe Michaela Bridge, definitely uh, Data Ames though. And you're going to be without two, two you know, the elf in the room might as well address it. You know, we knew that Naquan Tomlin was suspended and we missed this game, but Jeff Goodman already reported that, you know, when Quez Glover hobbled off the court, he seemed okay afterwards, wasn't receiving a ton of medical treatment. Um, seemed to be in good spirits, but he's he's out six to eight weeks per Jeff Goodman. So you, you're really don't feel incredibly deep, and you're you're in transition trying to figure out your offense, figure out your rotation. You're playing a really good opponent. You know, honestly, a lot of those factors if you combine them, that doesn't really spell very positive feelings for me. But I know this team will play hard, and it'll probably be competitive because of it. Yeah, I I don't have the best of, of vibes going into this game for K-State, just given the fact that, like you're saying, we, we don't know much about the depth right now. And then the guys that you're going to rely upon are, especially with Naquan Tomlin out of the equation, at least for the time being, You know, given the, the legal status of everything going on there, you don't know what to expect from the guys that you even have to rely on. Like forget trying to figure out is data Ames and RJ Jones and Michaela rich is freshman going to have to provide any role or, you know, is David Gasson better and at a level to where he can actually be more than just uh, okay. He gave us some, some, you know, 20 good minutes tonight. You don't know what to expect from Tyler Perry and Arthur Kaluma, who are probably the two best players on your roster right now, but you just don't know. It's there's a lot of unknowns. the The roster feels shrunk right now, which is strange considering going into this season. I think it felt like K State was going to be a deeper team this year, and I still think by the end of the season they will be. But there's not a ton of room and time for them to just feel their way through the non conference. And if if they're not ready to step up pretty early on in this in this season, they're going to put themselves in a pretty sizable hole. Now. One game against USC is not going to dictate that, so that's more of a big picture thing for you know two weeks from now when they're they're taking on Providence and then either Miami or Georgia uh, down in uh, the the Bahamas or whoever else awaits on the non conference schedule like Villanova. 
but it is one of those things that you just start to think about and it's it's a the basketball season came too quick for K-State this year uh, which is not a thing to say after all the momentum and energy from the Elite 8 run a season ago but with so many guys out and now more players uh, trying to sort through with Quez Glover and Naquan Tomlin not available, it there are a lot of question marks, and, and it does not make you feel good right now. I mean, I look, I, I've got a lot of optimism for Jerome Tang and, and what he's doing with K-State basketball, but over the last two weeks, uh, I've started to have not great feelings on the inside about what this season is for K-State. And I mean, hopefully I'm proven wrong, but – just everything that starts to come out, there's there's not been good news for K-State basketball in a long time. And you start to look at the roster and some of the issues they're dealing with. It just makes you think that this is, this is not off to a great start. So this is a good barometer and a good chance to kind of get everybody shifted back in the right direction with their game against USC tonight, who's a top 25 team. I know there's disappointment by some that Bronny James isn't going to play in this game, not ready yet after he had... The, uh, the the heart condition uh, back in the uh, offseason workouts. But this is still a really good team, still a really good recruiting class that came in outside of Bronny James and uh, a USC team that was a, a tournament team a season ago. So this is, this is a good team. And if K-State is able to compete with this version of their roster, it's going to make me feel a lot better about their chances moving forward this season. I still have high hopes for Kansas State. I just think that they're a – they're going to be a definite work in progress. It's going to take quite a bit of time. Now for USC, I mean, they got that 21 next to their name. It could be higher. Now, I actually thought they were a little underrated um, when it came to those polls, just because they return a lot of production. Boogie Ellis is one of the better players in the country, especially out West. You talked about Bronny James. They have three players on the all-pack 12 first and second team right now. So yeah. they have guys that are returning. They got the number one player in the country. What's up about Bronny James? They signed the number one player in the country, Isaiah Collier. So uh, USC is more than Bronny. They're more than Boogie Ellis. And we're, we're going to get the first glimpse of Isaiah Collier, who was the number one prospect in the country in last year's cycle. They're a very dangerous team. Interestingly enough, they also lost their secret scrimmage, though, and it was the San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you've got two teams that the the coaching staffs realize that they're going to have to rely on a lot of different wings, as in not you know the position wings, but as in you know different wings of their team. And I think that they they probably sorted through a lot of that in their exhibition and secret scrimmage stuff, and just to get guys prepared. And I think uh, both both sides will be feeling out rotations and everything else tonight. Uh, one of the more publicized, I guess, hyped moments of K-State basketball this year is Cam Carter and the role that he might evolve into. Um, look, I, I've said this all along about Cam Carter. The tools are there for Cam Carter to be a really good player for K-State. Like What he gets talked up to being sometimes, there, there is the opportunity for it to be there. We just didn't see many moments like that last year. The consistency lacks, the decision-making lacks sometimes, and I think we saw some better flashes in the exhibition. I thought it was probably the best that he's finished around the rim. He looked to attack, and he was just he was confident. I think confidence is the biggest thing for Cam Carter. What do you expect from him as probably you know the go-to guy if if Tyler Perry can't get his shot going? Yeah, he, and he had it was the confidence and the energy about him in that exhibition where he wasn't passive, he wasn't submissive. He, he just went and got it. He acted like an alpha with the ball in his hands, and the best thing was that he finished around the hoop. So, you know, all those things coupled together had me feeling a lot better about Cam Carter than I did going in and made me think, you know, the way that they kind of – you know, boosted him up and, and talked about him in the offseason. It might not be – I never thought it was a mirage, but it might not be all that hyperbolic if he's going to be alpha, you know, just really take the ball and really want to go get it. I, I thought he was a little – sometimes he can be a little unselfish, and I think Jerome Tanya said that. He was more selfish, and I think that's a good thing for this team. You mentioned Tyler Perry. I do think – we're about to see a big splash from him. Maybe it comes tonight. 
maybe it comes in the next game, but his reputation as a shooter is a, a fabrication. It is not a lie. There is a body of work that shows that he is that. And it's going to really explode at some point. Hopefully it's against USC tonight. Yeah, look, I, I love Tyler Perry. I I loved him at North Texas. I'm having to cover Wichita State and you know, the preview of those games. I was like, man, Tyler Perry, I like this guy a lot. You know, the hit the transfer portal. You can do it. You can do it. He finally did, and K-State was the, the choice. And uh I was excited, but Outside of the game that wasn't on video anywhere, Tyler Perry shooting his left a lot to be desired in scrimmages and exhibitions. So, look, you're right. The track record is there throughout college small, basketball. Small he, he can do it. So just get it figured out. And I think once they start falling, they're going to continue to fall. He got had a little bit of a stretch there in the exhibition where it started to pick up. So I'm excited to see how Tyler Perry does. And uh, USC certainly a good test to see it, it, how ready he is to play, you know, 30, you know, I guess 18 Big 12 games this year, and then, you know, seven others against pretty good opponents in the non con. And then once you get the tournament and everything else. So I, this is a good test for him. Now, the yeah, other newcomer, he, go ahead. And I say, and they're going to need a big to play well because yeah. well, no Naquan Tomlin. Um, they're already a little bit worried about rebounding. Like this could be where we learn a lot about Jarrell Colbert. Yeah, I mean, and look, Jarrell Colbert, I love the thought of Jarrell Colbert, so I want this to be a a good showing for him and uh, see where, where that goes. The other guy that's a newcomer and that can fit the bill, Arthur Kaluma coming in. Uh, last season at Creighton averaged almost 12 points a game, six rebounds. Consistency has always been kind of the, the issue there. There's been some fluctuation with his game. What do you an- anticipate K-State gets from Arthur Kaluma? I'm not real sure. He's he's kind of a guy that I haven't been able to figure out. I know he could play. I know he has all Big 12 potential. Um, he had a shot against uh, – who did they just play? Emporia. That I was like uh, – kind of looked ugly. But then he hit a three on the other end, and it didn't look ugly. So I don't know if his shooting mechanics were just out of funk on the one attempt because the second one I liked, um, the one that he nailed down. He can be explosive more than anything especially with Naquan out, probably need him to be a little bit more of a defender, a little bit more of a rebounder. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's probably the most pivotal thing is seeing how he can do that. I mean, he's had some moments in his career where he has rebounded at a high level. I mean, last year he had a 16-rebound game against UConn. And as we know, UConn pretty good with their big situation, went on to win the national title. So he can do it. It's just – I you know – we. We don't know a ton about him, not extensive, but you think about like really Dean Wade's career at K-State where it just seemed like the message every single year from Bruce Weber was like, if we can just get him to be aggressive and go get a rebound for us, like if he can do that. And he finally broke through and did do that. Like he he got to the point by the end of you know his junior year when he was healthy and his senior year when he was healthy, he was doing that stuff for K-State. And I, I think that that's probably something with – Arthur Kaluma, if you can get it through to him and communicate to him, hey, if you can do this every single night, you are going to be a great player because everything else is going to come to you if you can can do this one thing that we really need Uh, because also there is the offensive skill that he has there. And at the end of the day, like I don't know that there's a better communicator in the country than Jerome Tang to try and get his team and players to buy into what he needs from them. So I think that that in itself is probably enough to give K-State a little bit more of a boost than what I'm giving them credit for tonight against USC, uh, but we'll see. So y- you can probably ter- tell where I'm going with this. Do you have, a, you have a prediction for tonight's game with the Trojans and Cats? Yeah, I'll take a USC 83-77. I think, be, I think both these teams are going to run a little bit. It might be more yeah. high scoring than that. could be fun to watch, but – in general, I, I'm not down on Kansas State in general. Tonight's going to be a little rough, I think, in, in, in spots. I just think that they're going to be a, a slow, you know, growth. Uh, it's going to be a lead up to what they're going to be able to do this year. And maybe that's a good thing because then maybe you're playing your best basketball in March. And obviously that's what everyone wants to do. But And in the time being, I, I know maybe we're not putting a ton of attention on it, I think the loss of Quez Glover is pretty significant these yeah. next two months because you know what's going to happen. 
I'm, I'm, I guess I'm still like processing all of this. You're going to get a lot of action from the true freshman guards. Yes. Yes, you will. Uh, and look, I, I thought that there was a chance that some of those guys could find their way onto the floor in some role this year. Now it's like no time to get adjusted. Like you're going to have to do this. Not it's optional. If you, if you can have the talent and you're good enough to do it. I, I look, I think USC probably wins the game tonight. I'm with you. It probably does end up being pretty highly score, like a high scoring game. I, whoever wins this is certainly going to be into the seventies and you're probably right. Dips into the eighties because we know K state wants to go fast and USC obviously has a lot of the, the flash and the talent to do so. Uh, I think that I'm taking, I think this is probably one of those games where there it's a bit of a battle, but USC probably just has too much right now. They're the more put together team, even though Bronny James is out. Like you said, they still have tons of talent everywhere else. Uh, this is a good team. K-State, I mean, they've just had no time to adjust. It's like within the last week, they've been pounded with, oh, yep, no Naquan Tomlin, nope, no Quez Glover. And I, I just don't know that they've had enough time to get guys adjusted and ready for their role. So I'll, I'll take USC tonight, probably by a final score of, I'm going to go 77 to 65 is what I'll say. Because uh, I, I think early in the season, the shooting, the, the, the shots might be up to score into the 80s for both teams the effectiveness of the shooting might be absent uh, from these teams. But we'll find out. 9 o'clock tonight, the tip on TNT and Max, wherever you want to watch your Warner Brothers Discovery Sports properties. Uh, kind of unique to get a, a regular season game on one of those channels, so a little bit of uh, extra national exposure for the Wildcats to start the season. Last thing, D.Y., you are in Vegas. Do you have a best bet for college basketball tonight? You know, I, I haven't looked. I would say take the Tyler Perry points over. I think he has a big game. Okay, all right. There you go. I like that. I, I hope that it all comes on like seven threes tonight. My kind of game. It could. It That's could. Very well could. Uh, I don't know that if this, this is a best bet, but this is something that I'm probably going to take just because I saw how bad they were. I think they're the worst D1 basketball team I've ever seen. Texas is minus 31 and a half at home against Incarnate Word tonight. Uh, I bet Max Aismas wants to show out in his Texas debut, and Incarnate Word is god awful. So, uh, Texas minus 31 and a half. That's my uh, first bet of the college basketball season. So, that will do it for us. We will be back with more recaps of the K State and USC game tomorrow on K State Online and on three, as well as the rest of the season because the Cats return home on Friday for their home opener against Bellarmine. So, that will do it for us. Thanks to DY. I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching and listening to K State Online.